Okay, so you want to better understand myotones and better understand how you can use the movements of the upper limb and that knowledge of myotomes to test the functions of spinal nerve roots and spinal cord levels. Am I right? Because that was the title of the video. Um, so, a dermatome is a patch of skin innervated only by branches of a particular spinal nerve root level and therefore of a particular spinal cord level because that spinal nerve root comes out of a particular spinal cord level, right? A myotome is the same principle. It's a block of muscle innervated only by branches of a single spinal nerve root and therefore a single spinal cord level. Um, the trick is that in the embryo, sure, you have nice, neat muscle blocks, but in the adult, those muscle blocks come together to create the muscles of the upper limb and everything gets messy and compl complicated. Nonetheless, we can simplify this in a functionally useful way. Well, I think I can anyway. <laughs> Let's try. The brachial plexus is a great example of what happens, right? We have a nice, neat, segmented pattern of spinal nerve roots, but when they enter the brachial plexus, those, uh, the axons of those neurons come together, form new, ner new nerves, and those nerves then f innervate the muscles of the upper limb. So we can see how we go from something very neat and tidy to something very complex. That means that when you're considering myotomes and movements of joints, well, there is actually quite a bit of overlap for most of the movements, and there is some variability between people, just as we see with dermatomes, um, which limits the sensitivity and the accuracy of this testing mechanism. But as I understand it, it's a useful tool and it's one of the best we've got. I just teach anatomy. Somebody else will have to teach you the clinical side of things, right? There's a very nice neat pattern as we work our way down the upper limb from proximal to distal. So the first movement is uh, testing the C5 myotome and it is abduction of the upper limb of the shoulder joint, and it's also external rotation of the humerus at the shoulder joint. Both of those are C5. So here we're thinking about uh, the muscles of the rotator cuff and the deltoid muscles. So C5, C5. And then we go to the elbow joint. So C6, C6 is flexion at the elbow joint. C6 is also supination. That makes some sense because we're using biceps, and biceps is also a powerful supinator. So C6 and C6, but counterintuitively at the wrist, C6. So extension of the wrist is C6. And then C7 is the opposite. So extension of the elbow, C7, pronation of the forearm, C7, flexion of the wrist, C7. And then we go to the fingers. For C8, this is quite a nice test, so, so C8, finger flexion, C8, also finger extension, C8. Oh look, my thumb is extended, also C8. So C8, C8, and C8. And then as we go more distally still, now we get to the small muscles in the hand, T1, so the muscles between the bones, the interosseous muscles, um, the dorsal interosseous muscles, abduct. So abduction of the fingers, T1, that's your test, right? Abduction against resistance, so abduction of the fingers, T1. And that's it, we've gone all the way through the brachial plexus. Uh, and, and I think T1 will do all of the little muscles in the hand, all the intrinsic muscles of the hand. Um, so that's the method, right? We work our way down the joints. And we go, we start at C5, and we work our way to T1 as we get most distal. I think the, the, the elbow <laughs> and the wrist are the trickiest bits, but if you remember that it's tricky, maybe that helps to remember it. So C5, abduction, C5, 
external rotation at the shoulder. Uh, C6, uh, also C6, also C6, C7, C7, and uh, C7, and then C8, 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 and then we get to the hand, um, T1, so also T1, T1. Um, there's quite a bit of overlap. C6 and C7 tend to try and get involved in everything, uh, but I think, I think C5 only does abduction, as in only C5 contributes to abduction of the shoulder and external rotation of the humerus of the shoulder, rotator cuff muscles. Um, only um, C6 is involved in supination and only T1 is involved in uh, the intrinsic muscles of the hand. I think that's right. I haven't tested every single human on the planet, so some of us might be a little bit different, but that's, that's the memory map, right? Um, so, yeah. Good luck. But that, that's what we mean by myotome. So the idea of myotomes and dermatomes is confusing. Uh, a dermatome is a strip of skin innervated by branches of one spinal nerve root. A myotome is a block of muscle innervated only by branches of a single spinal nerve root. But as those muscle blocks in the embryo came together to make the muscles that we see in the adult, a muscle is made up of multiple embryonic muscle blocks, so innervated by multiple spinal nerve roots. So that list I just described is a simplification, but is what's generally listed in most places as the movements that you would use, and you'd compare the two different sides and you'd see how, you'd see how strong the person was. Those are the movements that you use to test those myotomes at different levels, to test those spinal nerve functions, and then you would relate that to dermatome findings and other clinical findings, and it just, it just adds to your picture of what's going on in your patient, right? If that helps you remember, uh, my work here is done. All right, speak to you next week.